Great evening, everyone. I am Dr. Kathy Amos, president, not president, CEO of Business and Power Mississippi Chamber of Commerce. And we are so excited tonight about our author's edition with Women Who Pray. I am honored and humbled to be a part of this amazing anthology project, uh, visionary Carlika Bisnight Menendez, and you're gonna hear more about her and from her in just a few minutes. I want to also uh, give a shout out to my amazing co-host, Sandy Sanders, Coffee Conversation with Sandy and friends. So we're getting ready to kick off with 12 amazing authors. And you might hear a little bit from me interacting with these ladies since I'm the uh, I did the foreword for this book. I'm blessed to have done the foreword. So we, you may hear just a little bit, but I want these ladies to shine tonight and I want them to empower you. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Sandy and Sandy is going to start the evening. Take it away, Sandy. Hi, everybody, and this is Sandy Sanders. I am the co-host for Mike Knight Global of the Business Empowered Mississippi and the Mike Knight Global program that is held right here, Facebook Live, every second Monday night of the week, as well as the fourth night of the week. We are excited. Yes, this is an amazing project that has been birthed from the amazing, you know her, she's internationally platform speaker, international speaker, uh, yes, and visionary of what? The project that is called Women Who Pray. Now, there is a, was a major mandate on this amazing woman, what, to have 90 women to come together and I love her dearly. She's, I call her my spiritual daughter. And so all the way out of Atlanta, Georgia, the one and only, yes, Ms. Car Mrs. Carlika Baznight Menendez. Come on, y'all, give it up, give it up, give it up. Yes, indeed. And as Dr. Kathy indicated, she is the forwarding author of this particular project. And so we are so excited. Who is Carlika Baznight Menendez? She is the number one black face of women that talks about in menopause. Yes, she is a number one best-selling author, award-winning life coach, prolific speaker, and global appeal. As one of the highly sought out for an innovative approach of a widely ranged topics, Carlika has earned both a dom uh, domestic and international respect from the world stage, as we mentioned earlier. She is the creator of the Effort Method. Yes, and the AVE and the menopause and mimosas. Y'all know it's been happening for the past six to eight months. This lady has truly been shining. So with our time, I will get back into her bio a little bit later. She has managed to obtain a BS degree in biology, pre-med, and an AS in historological technology, all while raising her family. She's a, an amazing wife, mother of children, and working a full-time job. So now what does she do? She comes along and she mothers. Yes, I may be on the other side, but I look to her with her leadership. She's just cracking up uh, her leadership leadership because yes, uh, she is one who has that leading spirit. And so uh, God has given her a mandate to do what lead 90 women into a time of putting together an anthology project of 90 women. And yes, that's what we do. We are 90 women who pray. How are you, my dear? I am doing amazing, amazing. So thank you, Dr. Kathy. And yes, you all, I read the forward. I cannot wait till you all read it um, as well. And thank you, Mama Sandy. Yes, I am her spiritual daughter. And the thing is this, you all, 90 women who pray, right? And this is not just about the book, but it's a movement right? Yes. It's a prayer movement to bring people back to saying, you know what, let me get on my knees. Let me seek God. Let me quit getting, looking for validation from other people and let me listen and get um, strategy from the Holy Spirit. Cause let me tell you, he will give you strategy. Yes. Yes. And it's so true. And let's talk about the real fact is that the enemy was not happy when this project went forth. <laughs> 
<laughs> your body was attacked. You went through some some uh, health issues, but mm -hmm. I believe that the Bible says is that when two or three are touching and agreeing, <laughs> and mm -hmm. there he shall and will be in the midst. And when we called on the Jehovah Rapha, the God that healed thee, lo and behold, we know we saw the manifestation of your healing. So we thank God. We know that with this type of project and what God, what God is doing, that he, uh, yeah, obviously the enemy is not happy, but God gets the victory. Amen. Yeah. He sure does. He sure does. And look, before we even hopped on, I was telling Dr. Kathy, I got sick today. Wow. Wow. <laughs> sick today. Same, same thing I had called you about. Something attacked my stomach, just like that. But I had to roll over on the floor and yeah. I wrote in my journal and I felt like I was having contractions, like literally mm. where I had to take deep breaths. But I know this is for someone and Holy Spirit was just like, it's contractions fractions because of pain. A lot of people are dealing with the pain, but you cannot give up. You cannot give in pain from grief, pain from financial difficulties, whatever yeah. that may look like, but it's birthing season, right? And so it is birthing season. So to whoever's out there listening on tonight in the next 10 years, you catching the replay next year or whenever it is birthing season. And look, when you're in that birthing room, you don't care what you look like, right? So some, of, right. Us, you, some of us being too cute about giving God praise. Some of us being too cute. We're looking at like, oh, I don't want, I don't want my wig to come off, y'all. Okay. But when God, what God is doing in your life, you cannot abort the mission. My, 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 my. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. You have some amazing, amazing women that will be sharing that is going to share about their experience and being a part of this great project. I'm going to go on through the line. I do believe that um, Crystal, I'm just going to call on you because I believe that you are on my list to go ahead. So we're going to start with you. How are you, Crystal? Life and so amazing. Thank you for being with us. Good evening, good evening, and thank you so much for having me. I am excited to be here. My name is Crystal D. Life. I am the proud mother of three, proud military spouse or retired Navy um, chief spouse. Um, and my call is simple. My call is to empower young girls to be all that they have been called to be. Um, I come from a long line of prayer warriors, and so it was no coincidence for me that Carlika started this movement because that's what it is, ladies. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. We have gotten away from the very foundation of prayer. And so when she, when she embarked on this journey, I was glad to get onto it because one of the pillars for me that set the tone for prayer was my grandmother. And my grandmother passed at 102 years old. And so um, during that time, I fought to try to be where I am now. And it was me remembering the seeds that she had planted in me when I was a little girl going to her house and kneeling down every night before we got into bed and before we got up in the morning and praying. Mm -hmm. So when Carlika um, accepted the call and then offered it out to everyone, I knew it was not a coincidence. I knew that it was going to be prayer that was going to be the very thing that pushed me through to the next level. It was no coincidence that the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said that this year it was going to be manifestation. Everything yeah. that he spoke to me about the year before within the, the pandemic was the enemy was trying to stop. I had to pray my way through it. I had to remember the foundation that my grandmother had laid in me when I was such a young girl. So I thank Carlika for even accepting the call, but more importantly, for not trying to do it by herself. Yeah. Calling amongst all these others to help her. So I'm just excited to be here. So thank you. You are so welcome. As you indicated, you all that are listening, that yes, uh, Lady Crystal is, um, she's retired military U.S. Navy chief. And they are, and she and her husband are proud parents. Uh, her husband, Lamont Life, they're proud parents of three children. She has worked with the federal government for over 29 years, both in civilian and defense agencies, motivated by her own life experience. It's a girl thing. And so for sure, 
sure, yes, we're so elated for her to be on this uh, this platform this evening. So at this time, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Dr. Catherine, if you will. Thank you so much, um, Crystal, for being with us. And Dr. Catherine, if you will, come on and take the stage and share with us. You are also part of this amazing book project. So Carlika says don't join us a book project just because it's her, right? <laughs> That's what she said. So I prayed about it. Uh, and I even was going to back out at some point <laughs> of it, uh, too. But I am so glad that I joined this uh, book project uh, with 90 women. That's 90 days of strong prayer. And I know Carly will say, don't say nothing about her, but she is a wonderful woman and a wonderful leader. So it was easy to say yes to this. Uh, knowing that it would be well organized and well put together and that it was for the right reason, uh, mm -hmm. that it was built on God. So everybody showed up. I don't consider myself like a huge prayer, like, you know, praying openly. Uh, I never leave the prayers <laughs> for any place. I always divert to somebody else. But um, it was nice to be able to showcase a prayer that I uh, pray for myself and pray over other people. And to do this, my mother is not here, but she is also a part of this uh, 90 women uh, book wow. anthology, just like Carlika and her daughter are, are here. Yes. Too. So both my mom and I got to do a book project together. So that was my motivation for doing it. Plus, God said yes after I prayed. He said, do this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so awesome. I was being obedient to God. I love it. The scripture that you selected here uh, as your bio, I love it that you are a licensed clin uh, clinical uh, psychiatrist, board mm -hmm. certified uh, neurotherapist, and a sought out speaker, media expert who's been featured in Forbes, Oprah Magazine, the Huffington Post, CNN, and many other outlets. And so except, you know, saying yes to this project, I could get more in depth. I know we're crunched for time, but I want to uh, recognize your scripture. You said whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, yeah. whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, mm -hmm. if anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, Philippians 4 and 8. That is a, such an amazing scripture. Thank you so much for being a part of the table today yeah, yeah. and the conversation at the mic. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I do want to go ahead and bring on Kalika, uh, Carlika's daughter. Uh, I believe I have her as well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring her up. Let me go ahead and get her bio here. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Where are you? I don't know if I have her bio. Is it uh, Cartia? Yes, my sister. <laughs> oh, that's your sister. Okay. All right. Come on, sister. I, I believe yes. Car <laughs> I was ready to see Carsey's face pop up. I was like, "Oh, my niece is up here." I am. <laughs> Go ahead. How are you, Miss Baz Knight? I am doing fine. I'm doing wonderful. Um, it is definitely an honor and a pleasure to be up here. I'm the proud sister of Carly. I'm very proud of her. But even though we're family, I definitely honor and respect her call in her ministry. And so when she called me about um, being in the book, I probably was the slowest person on everybody up here. <laughs> but I just felt like, you know, and even as family, we still pray and we see God about things that we even collaborate and do together. So um, it was definitely motivational. I picked a prayer that I, you know, pray and use for myself. Um, one thing that I like to empower youth and adults is, you know, how do we survive the waiting period? The waiting period from knowing what we want and what we're trying to manifest. How do we just stay in positivity, seeking God, seeking the Lord and staying positive? So that's something that whether it's in business conference or whatever that I like to empower people about. So I was really, you know, el elated and very happy to be part of the, the project and the book. Awesome. And, and thank you guys for having me tonight as well. Awesome. Yes. And we have it that you're born in June of 2081 in Franklin, Germany, both of your parents from your parents, active duty, civil service member, spent most of your life in Hampton Roads, Virginia, love working out through various cities and communities. I love it. In 2011, you became a number one circuit representative for the Virginia State Bar's Young Lawyers Division and remained until September the of 20. 2012. And so since then, you've become the district uh, representative for that. Is it that particular area? I can't see the first district representative. Is yes, that correct? that's correct. Okay. 
Judicial circuits one, three, five, and seven, and eight. Each year, you orchestrate and participate in various community uh, services and events for young lawyers throughout the district. So, thank you, Representative. We certainly salute you, honor you, and thank you for being here with your sister. What a blessing! Thank, thank you. you so much. That is amazing. Thank you for being at the mic. And I'm pretty sure if we have some time, we'll come back and have more dialogue. At this time now, I would like to bring up Dr. Sheila Sapp. You all, she, I believe that she's somewhat of the foundation core of us. She kind of keeps us in line. I love her. Dr. Sapp, come on, take the mic and uh, let us know who you are. Oh, I believe that Dr. Kathy has the honor of interviewing you. Okay, so we'll mark if you will, come on. Uh, listen, I love interviewing you, but since I did call you up to the mic, let's go ahead and, and uh, share. Well, good evening, everyone. And I am elated to be a part of this group. And I do want to say that um, Mrs. Carlica Bass Knight Menendez, and yes, all of that is <laughs> a former parent of mine. And I really felt bad that I didn't remember her, but that was good because I'm a former school administrator. And if you remember your parent, then you know that there's a reason why you still remember them. I must say, I was delighted to be a member of the Women Who Pray group. And when Carlika came up, with the idea for the 90 days, I mean, 90 women who pray, then mm -hmm. I knew I had to participate. Now, yeah. I'm gonna tell you something. I uh, come from a family who, um, they were Pentecostals, and to me, God was somebody you didn't play with. When it rained, you sat down because God was talking. So I always thought if I didn't do something right, I was going to be struck by lightning. So <laughs> that's my background. And as far as praying, I heard um, Dr. Kathy said that she wasn't one for praying out loud and I wasn't either, but I find not only am I stepping out and praying, I not only wrote a prayer, but one day I even sang. And as I said before, I am not a singer, but this is a time, this has been a time for me to reconnect. And as I told you, I always saw God as, you know, I was really fearful, but now I have established a relationship. And I realize that he is loving and when he convicts me, it's not out of fear or that he doesn't like me. It's because he loves me and he is refining me. And I chose the scripture from Job chapter 14, verse seven. And I will say that it's about renewal, restoration and rebirth. I recently retired. I'm a former school administrator. I live here in Woodbine, Georgia. I have an adult daughter and my husband and I are enjoying this time. And he's my uh, technical person. So I, I, I'm just mm -hmm. elated and excited. And I can't wait until you get the book. So I'm not gonna tell you any more about my prayer. You get the book and you read it. Thank you so much. I always love hearing Dr. Sapp speak. And again, we I, I really feel like she's one of those pillars part of, she's part of the makeup of the pillar. So those of you that are listening, this is uh, the uh, Business Empower Mike Knight Global uh, broadcast where we broadcast each and every second and fourth night. Tonight is the author's edition. We're elated to have the amazing uh, Mrs. Carlika Baznight Menendez, who is the visionary author of the project called Women Who Pray, a 90 women anthology project. So those of these are the women that you are hearing that are part of this project. At this time, I'm going to bring up Michelle 
if she will come on to the table. Ah, oh, there you are, beautiful. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you, ladies, doing? We are. We are great. Good. You're meeting. You're seeing your coworker. Your coworkers. You're seeing your co-laborers in the vineyard and your co-authors. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is amazing. Um, Carlita, fast night, Menendez. Thank you so much for this y'all she pushes me i pass by this when i saw her put this i, I passed by it a hundred times because i i'm trying to make sure i speak i don't say what i don't like to do but this was one of the things right here y'all so keep me in your prayers but she pushed me and she'll send me a message every now and then about some things you know even with this with the 90 day prayer for women and i'm one that right i'm actually working on uh, my own journal um and i was fearful of doing this i mean really i said no i'm not you know like the other lady said i'm not one to pray out loud but i do pray um i like i said i was nervous about it all but i'm grateful to be a part of this um my favorite one of my favorite scriptures that i live by is jeremiah 29 11. um i'm one that's always in my head with thinking different things but i lost a couple of years ago i lost my mom and a nephew, um, lost my mom four months later, my nephew, and then I lost uh, a sister of mine six months later, an aunt, I buried my grandmother in December, and I just buried my dad in February. So, you know, yeah, so it, like, I don't like to hurt, so I'm like, okay, God, what is it in this that I need to be getting? So that actually, that pushed me into praying and being more serious about what I needed to be doing for him even the more. And with Jeremiah 29 and 11, when he talks about, well, I know he knows the plans that he think towards me. Like I say, sometimes we can be in our own head. I know I can too. So that's one of the prayers that actually pushed me through um, from the different things that I did deal with. So I'm so grateful to be here um, with you ladies. I, I'm excited about the project. Um, this is just the beginning for me. So I said, even though I may feel like this, God, you know what? I'm just going to push it. And I'm just going to do it. So thank you, ladies. Thank you, Carlita. <laughs> well, I know she's appreciative every time you show up. Yeah. And you yeah. have a motto <laughs> that you say, audience, this is our, uh, our speaker who just finished, author Michelle Dean Wilson. She is a uh, 53-year-old wife of 19 years to her our childhood best friend. She's a mother of three amazing children. Uh, one of the key things in her bio that I noticed at the very end, she says that I am my sister. She takes very seriously the ability to be able to help and bless so many. And so she, of course, in her profession, she is a licensed um, nail, uh, I'm looking for a nail technician since 2002. Um, and so there's much um, information about her. Anointed Hands was established in 2007, which is her business. And that was her first business, which was in 2007. Mm -hmm. I want to acknowledge that she's a blogger. And so you all, you want to look her up, uh, definitely reach out. Uh, she is Michelle Dean Wilson. I, I, I want to look for your blog as well. I'm noticing this. So your blog, you started in 2015 called Naturally by Out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. So blog spot. Yes, it's yes. all running together. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes, you for helping me with that. Y'all know <laughs> sometimes right. I will mess it up. But <laughs> now, too, without okay. further ado, thank you so much, Michelle, for coming to the mic. Thank you. And it's called Natural Naturally. Go ahead. N naturally Beautiful Soul. Naturally Beautiful Soul blog spot. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for coming to the mic. We have one more and then we will be bringing back to the microphone back to the front is none other than Dr. Kathy Amos. But before we do that, we're going to bring Valicia to the microphone and welcome author. How are you? Felicia, are you? Mm -hmm. I'm getting. 
There you are. See, I have to look down how you all are in my screen here. I apologize. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome to the microphone. Let us all know. I believe I'm meeting you for the first time now. See, I'll get all starstruck here for a second because <laughs> we follow each other's social media, but I won't. It's your time at the mic. Come on. Okay, I'm Valicia, and I'm, I don't personally know Carlika, but I thank God for her. Um, I was just coming out of the Make It Happen book anthology. And I was strolling on Facebook and I saw her, her book anthology on women who pray. So I went, I said, I'm signing up for this class. I'm signing up for her book anthology. So I went and I signed up and uh, I'm really excited, excited to be a part of it uh, because my family comes, we're a, a very spiritual people. Um, I grew up in, in the church, morning, noon and night. It seemed like uh, we were in church, uh, me and my siblings. Uh, my parents were non-negotiable when it, when it came to church. So um, as children, we don't understand. We don't understand why we are in church and why our parents are, are, have, have us there to allow the word to be instilled in us. Well. Prayer has been a part of my life ever since I was a child because of my mother, because of my grandparents and my father. Uh, my father was a preacher. So prayer has really shaped my life. Um, I've written a prayer book called Let Us Pray back in 2016. Uh, it's, a, it's called Let Us Pray, A Guide to Covering Your Life in Prayer. It's for new converts and believers and anybody that wants to read it. Um, it, it has really, really changed my life because I have a closer relationship with God and having a prayer life is with God is just like us to communicating. So I, I didn't, I didn't know how to pray. And I really, right now, I don't think that none of us will really know how to pray. Um, all we can do is, um, share our hearts with God. Um, let, let him know what's on our hearts, on our minds. And as we are doing that, we listen to him. We can, we communicate like we're, we're doing. So I chose the scripture, Romans 10 and nine, because I, I love to minister to people as far as salvation from the salvation side, because I know that it's important. It's important that we, we uh, know where we're going. So Romans 10 and 9 says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God have raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. So that scripture, I love that scripture because it, it's a scripture to help us, help us and our souls as we give our lives to Christ. And, and when we give our lives to Christ, we are sealed until redemption day. So mm -hmm. that scripture helps me. And I want to see others saved. I want to see others give their lives to Christ. I have a heart for people. So that's my, that's my scripture uh, for this uh, book anthology. And I'm really excited, really excited. And if Carlika is having another book anthology, I'm joining. I'm joining. <laughs> she said, get ready. I'm right there. Or I think you'll be in line with a whole lot of people, Lady Valencia. So listen, you said something so key. We're all believers. We're women of God. And we believe... Um, and our prayers are in various areas, but what I like ultimately, and this lets us know, yes, it's in line because it is God's ultimate desire is, is that uh, in, an individual get to know who he is and accept him as their personal savior. That right there is a blessing that you're on this broadcast. You may have been on others, but we're hearing it tonight to a new audience. So they're letting you know, we're letting you know that this book is, yes, including salvation. And yes. the author herself, Lady Brimage, her look for her, um, her readings, her 
prayers, her scripture. And we believe God, we all touch and agree with you that someone will be saved just by picking up this book in the name of Jesus. Amen. It has been such a delight. Again, we thank you, those of you that are watching the Business Empowered Mississippi. This is our Global Mic Night. I'm going to bring on, yes, our host, the one and only, the phenomenal CEO of Business Empowered Mississippi, none other than Kathy, Dr. Kathy Amos, who will continue our interview process. And then we will learn some more information about what's happening with the Business Empowered Chamber of Commerce. Did I miss Tamika? Tamika, did we miss you? Uh, I don't know who was going to call me, but I'm here. <laughs> well, well, honey, I'm going to call you. I don't have your bio. Sandy does, so we're going to tag team, and Sandy's going to share your bio. She has it up. But before you come up, I just wanted to share this because I really feel like this is a real good opportunity for those who are listening in and that will be listening in to understand uh, the power of prayer and the purpose in which this book was birthed out. We are living in a dying nation, in a dying world. And God is calling for intercessors. God is calling for us to have a prayer life with him. Mm -hmm. He wants to teach us how to pray. And for, and I, I think I heard uh, Valicia said, you know, we don't know how to pray. Let me tell you something. If you can communicate with God, you are praying yes. in the way that he has established your heart and your relationship with him. And now let me tell you something. I, I could go on and on about this, but for those of you that are listening, it is time for us to pray. If we can get everything that we, every book uh, and partner with women like these amazing women who are moving and shaking on their knees and laying out on their faces, believing God and praying, praying for miracle signs and wonders and healings and deliverance. Look, let me tell you, it's still not enough of us praying. And if yeah. you... Uh, can, can start off with five minutes and, 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 and continue to do it until you grow in it, do it. But it's time to pray. It's time to get serious about our time with God and building that relationship. We just came out of a pandemic and we're still in it. But even in that, many of us, this, this thing shook us to our very core. If it caused us to fall on our knees and call on a God that heals a nation, a world. And this is our time to give him glory, to understand who he, he is. We don't need to say, well, the pandemic is over now, I can stop praying. It's mm -hmm. not that way. And it's not that simple. And it's not right. So we've got to establish ourselves. He is looking for praying people, people that he can talk with, people that he can commune with, that he can tell his secrets to, people that uh, will do what he says when he says do it, even when it doesn't make sense. So I'm not going to go any farther, but I had to get that off my chest. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I just had to get that off my chest. We have got to pray. We've got to connect with people that will help us to pray, that will get where two or three are gathered in his name, touching yes. and agreeing. His word tells us that he is going to be in the midst. Come on, let's, let's make it 91, 92, 93. Let's make it 190. Let's make it 1,090. Come on, let's not stop. This is a movement. It is time to go forth and do what it is that God is calling us to do. Our primary commission to God is to pray. We can't preach yes. to the nations until we learn how to connect with him in prayer. Now, Tamika, let's get to you. Sandy. <laughs> yes, I know. I'm coming up. So where is it at? Who is, yes, the lady Tamika Chapman. As a woman who had endured 18 years of motherhood while battling PCOS, Tamika's firsthand what it 
means and how it feels to persevere in life towards success in her role as a business growth strategist um, to do what she mom to mompreneurs to make a chapman has helped women learn how to create to build to launch the businesses with no stress during their journey a wife of 22 years mommy of two toddlers ceo of the mogul media yes you all know it you've heard it and we have seen her in her element she's a world record holder in the published work, number one international best-selling author and award-winning global speaker. If you will, my lady, come on to the stage, yes, into the mic. Thank you so much for being here, Ms. Chapman. Thank you all. I appreciate the opportunity to be here amongst such amazing, prayerful women. You know, this is what I want in my life every single day. Dr. Amos, you just set me up a total failure, okay, to have to come behind all of that. However, I will say, <laughs> I will say that my life, and I love what you said that we talk to God how we know to talk to God. You know, He accepts us however we talk to God. Um, and if you see my shirt, my shirt say Jesus is my bruh. Okay, He is my bruh because that's how I talk to Him. I talk to Him like He's right here next to me every single day. I want to have that connection with Him. And for me, when Carlika when she had this epiphany of such an amazing project, I said, you know what? <laughs> yes, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Because if I can inspire anybody to have a relationship like I have with God, like I have with Jesus, then let me do that. Let me do my little part of being a part of something so amazing. And so my whole life has been based on Matthew 17 and 20. If you have faith the size of one mustard seed, of a mustard seed, anything is possible, anything. And so every woman that signed on in this project, they had to believe in themselves. They had to have the faith to say, okay, let me take a step forward. Let me write this prayer. Let me submit it. Because with that change happens in our own lives. When we start to write and we start to read it back, we are transforming ourselves with our own words. So again, like I don't know who it was that said it, you know, when we don't know how to pray, when we don't know what to say, we just start talking, just start talking, just start talking because everything that you need to say will come out. I remember 18 years of, of battling infertility, crying every single day, praying every single day, and I'm tearing up right now as I think about it, but trying to figure out what was going to happen, when was it going to happen, when is it going to be my turn, when is it going to be my time? I don't want to see another baby, you know, somebody else have another baby and I can't have one, you know, they have five, you know, so again, it was about praying and believing that eventually my blessings would come and honey, they came, they came in the form of two toddlers. <laughs> However, that is the power of prayer. That is the power of believing and not giving up and saying, no matter how long it takes, no matter what obstacles I have to go through, I'm still going to hold on. I'm still going to hold on to the little faith that I still have because I know that he's going to, he's going to bless me. He's going to doubly bless me. He's going to bless me in ways that I can't even imagine. So again, if I could give any of that faith and pour any of that that perseverance and, and that belief into anybody else. I wanted it to be a part of what Carlique is doing with Women Who Pray. And again, thank you so much for following and being obedient and bringing this, bringing this forth to allow us to be a part of something so amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you all for the platform. Thank you so much, Dr. Kathy and Miss Sandy. Appreciate y'all. Thank you, Tamika. That was that was really awesome and very encouraging, very inspiring uh, to just uh, get comfortable with uh, talking with God. And, and if you don't know how, just open your mouth by faith and just begin to create a dialogue, a conversation with him. Uh, I, I do a teaching on uh, prayer uh, just from the model prayer. And that's where I think all of us, when we were kiddies, started with that model prayer our father uh carlica i don't know i don't know about how your mama knew taught you but my mama said our father which i in heaven i mean we really we we really broke down and broke synonyms and <laughs> dr sap would not like my household because we broke all kinds of synonyms but baby coming up we learned how to pray and how the how each part of that prayer truly means how you can express yourself with God. 
and how he brings heaven down to earth on our behalf. So Tamika, God just brought down two little babies from heaven to earth just for you because you hung in there. Yes, yes, yes. Now we're going to move on to Tanya Williams. Tanya, come on. Tanya is a transformational life coach. She loves helping people become the best version of themselves. Tanya, what would you like to share with us tonight about prayer? Well, first of all, it's um, the foundation of my life. I could not have gotten to where I am without prayer. And like you ladies have discussed, you know, it's just that relationship with God and just knowing that I can go to him for anything and everything, no matter where I am. You know, sometimes people think I'm talking to myself, but I'm actually just having a conversation with him and I take him everywhere I go. Um, he's not only, you know, my foundation, but he's part of my business strategy and everything that I do. And I think we're living in such a time where people don't realize that that relationship is going to be the very thing that's, um, you know, going to help them through hard times. And when I say that I want to help you become the best version of yourself, for a long time, I allowed things that had happened to me. Um, really cloud who I was and how I saw myself and I did not see myself how God did but it wasn't until I established that relationship with him that I could see myself as he did mm -hmm. and you know I feel that so many young women are in bondage to things and they don't know how to get out because they don't have that relationship and it's so important for us to teach our kids how to pray you know I feel that as a mother that is um, the most important thing that I have could have taught my children and I have boys, but it was so important for me to not only teach them, not only who they were, but whose they are before the world has a chance to tell them. And so um, I think it's very important. That's one of our greatest assignments as parents is to be able to, um, like Valencia said, you know, some people don't know how to pray. pray. We need to teach our children how to have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with them. Awesome, awesome. Yes, we do need to teach our children how to pray. Uh, this is the, they are the next generation and they have so much in them right now, so much wisdom. They have more wisdom in them now than we had when we were coming up. Would y'all agree with me when I say that? <laughs> these, these children are a lot wiser than we were coming up. So yes, we need to teach them how to pray just like we put those uh, those games in their hands we need to take those games and look say let's let's just have a little time with god uh it's much needed in this hour we're going to go on to thank you so much tanya tanya is also uh a, a life coach and uh on ig you can find her at spiritually underscore grounded uh she is the author of the best version of me, the best version of me. She also has a podcast, Fierce, Favorite, and Spiritually Grounded. It's available on iTunes, Spotify, Google, Park, uh, Chaser, uh, Verbal Podcast, okay? So thank you so much again, Tanya, for uh, spending some time with us. Did we do Dr. Look, I want to go and do Dr. Sapp again, but we... <laughs> Do some, since uh, since uh, Sandy took, took my uh, my client, took, I did. I took your client. I know. Yeah. So I, <laughs> you see how we do? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go on to Alicia. Alicia, is it Sale? Is that did I pronounce that correctly? Still, Sale. <laughs> Alicia is a woman of many hats. But Alicia, yes. But most importantly, she is a purpose lover. She understands sure. that a life without purpose yields wasted time. So she pushes to walk in her purpose, which is God's will for her life every day. She doesn't do it alone though. Mrs. Sale has been married to her knight, Angelo Sale for eight years. Uh, as a couple, they push to ensure purpose in uh, is carried out both individually and as one. Without further ado, let me just bring her on and let her share her heart with you regarding 
her prayer life. Hello, ladies. Um, thank you, Dr. Kathy and Mrs. Sandy. Um, Carlika, big thanks to you. Um, <laughs> I am excited to be here on this evening. I um, I feel a little um, famous being on the platform with you ladies tonight. Uh, <laughs> So about prayer life for me, my prayer every day is that I continue to walk in God's will for my life. Um, I absolutely love everything about purpose and about prayer. I would just say that um, prayer is um, being able to pray is a relationship. It's having a relationship with God. And I am one for writing the vision down, which is what my prayer was about for women who pray, writing the vision down and um, watching it just manifest um, and also being patient. <laughs> My prayer was the prayer that I wrote for the women's anthology um, was specifically for me. God had tested my patience and, you know, I just thought the world was ending and I'm just like, okay, God, why? <laughs> but um, he also used... Um, I like to write, I do a lot of journaling. So what I was praying for, he actually, um, he gave me a little surprise. Last year um, I was pregnant and he used, I'm saying that he used my little baby to um, see through what I was actually praying for because the baby was not on my list of things that I was praying for, but the list that I had created, he used my baby to make those things come forth. And I'm just thankful for that. Even though we suffered a miscarriage, um, I'm just thankful. You know, um, I'm thankful and back to patience and writing a vision down, you know, every prayer that I'm writing now, okay, God, where my baby at? <laughs> so um, yes, prayer is a relationship and I'm just thankful. Well, I want you to be encouraged, Alicia, because he's going to give you the desires of his heart, of your heart, because his desire is for you to have your baby. And I just believe I don't have no better sense than to believe that your baby is in heaven and he is going to deposit it down here in earth just for you. And you, Thank you. you will know that he or she came straight from the throne room of grace, just answering a prayer and a desire of your heart. Just be encouraged. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Next, we have Lakara Brown. Lakara. Lakara uh, has a bachelor's degree of science and business administration, followed by a master's degree of science in human services administration. Her life experiences uh, have cultivated her relationship with God, prayer driven. She is a steward of her church and she is also the chairwoman of the women's and youth ministries at her church. So Lakara, come on and share with us a little bit tonight. Good evening. Good evening. I am so grateful for being here. Thank God for, um, I just thank God for this opportunity. Um, prayer is a very, very big part of my life. I believe that it is our most edifying um, part of our relationship with God. Um, the most intimate part of a relationship with God as far as speaking to him and giving them your thoughts and giving them your worries and giving him your anxieties and then listening for his comfort. Um, so it has definitely sculpted everything that I've encountered um, in life. My family, you know, I just like um, mentioned earlier, I would kneel down at my grandma's bedside with her and we would pray together when I was a very little girl. And my dad was a pastor and, you know, I watched him pray about some things and within minutes it manifested. So I have always had a strong um, belief that prayer broke through things. 
And um, going through a very tough time in my life the past couple of years, coming out and entering the group on Facebook, Women Who Pray, was just so awakening for me um, because I was in a really dark place at one time. But coming into this group and Carlika, I thank God for her because she's just so heartwarming and loving and like, you know, you get those inboxes and she's, she's just bright in my whole day. But um, this um, particular anthology was a manifestation of a prayer that I had written. I've written for, you know, written down prayers. I would say for the most part, coming from a teenager, I started writing down prayers. Then I would write letters to God, um, you know, and I wrote it down at the beginning of this year that I wanted to become an author and I wanted to write a prayer book. I didn't know how it was gonna look, but it looked like this and I'm just so excited about it. Um, the scripture that I put in, put in the book is God is within her, she will not fail. And that has been so powerful for me just in the past couple of years, because even in the times where I felt like I wasn't going to make it, God and his Holy Spirit just pushed me and kept me going. You know, it was tears, it was dark days, but I just felt his Holy Spirit constantly with me. And this, that scripture has definitely um, kept me in some of my darkest moments. So, but I'm just so grateful to be a part of this um, book. And I love all of the women. We've had several little um, meetings and so everybody is so heartwarming and it's just good to have women to come together on a platform and we could just be ourselves in God. And I'm thankful for that as well. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Lakara. We appreciate those words. And you know what? You are a strong prayer warrior. <laughs> you are a pioneer. You, you, when look, when you get 50, 60, 70 years old, you're gonna be, you're gonna be leading the leading the crowd. Come, let's go forth. Let's go forth, prayer warriors. So, yes, you thank you so much for that. That was very encouraging for me. Okay, last but not least. Is it last but not least, Ms. Lawana Wilson? All right, Ms. Lawana R. Wilson is a speaker, a purity coach, and author of the book, Virgin. This book was birthed from a desire to start a conversation that she felt was rarely happening between her generation and those behind her regarding sexual purity and discovering their identity and worth in Christ. She is an advocate uh, uh, for abstinence and discovering your purpose in Christ. Ms. Wilson, where are you? Let's hear from you. It's great to have you on tonight. It is great to be here, Dr. Kathy and Ms. Sandy. I am excited to be here, excited to be a part of this amazing work that Mika last night Mendez is can you all still hear me? You can't. Okay. All right. I, I don't know if you if you said anything else, Dr. Kathy. I didn't hear you, but um, as far as my contribution to the anthology, um, in my time of spending mentoring and coaching young people about their value and their worth, I began to notice how uneven it was, how unbalanced it was that our young ladies get plenty of this information about their value and worth, but our young men don't. And so I began to develop a great burden for our young men. And I, I know I don't have to say much on that because I know we all know the current state of our young men. Um, and so in that, my entry in the, in the book is really focused on that, on that burden that the Lord put on my heart. For our young men to know their worth, our young men to know their value, 
our young men to be able to work through a lot of the trauma and pain that they have gone through. But because of the way society and culture is set up, they can't cry about it. They can't show weakness. They can't even talk about it. Because it's not until those young men and not just young men, but our men in general, get back in position in God's kingdom that we will start seeing the breakthrough that we're looking for. And so that's why I chose to um, focus my prayer for the for the anthology. You know, Luana, it's it's um, it's so refreshing to hear you share your heart about our young men because there I, I know that there are men out there that are connecting with other young men, but it's so refreshing that women can come alongside our men and begin to pour into our young men because we have value and we can share some wisdom with them as well. So thank you so much for uh, your leadership in that and continue to do that that God has put in your heart to do for uh, our young ladies and men. Now I'm going to bring back on, uh, I almost called uh, Carlika Dr. Carlika y'all. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Kalika. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not messing with the, the call of God on your life, am I? <laughs> you can get off of mute. Oh, oh Lordy, <laughs> that's a first right there. Oh, um, okay. But hey, whatever he says, do that. Well, that's what I am doing. Like literally. Well, I want you to share with us what's coming up with Women Who Pray. What, what's, what's your next move? I know we have an event coming up, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, can you give us information on how we can support what you're doing and, and the book and uh, all of the authors and your mission and your vision? Yes. So first of all, let me just say thank you. Right. And I've expressed this in the group, but I keep saying it over and over again. And you all are probably like, okay, we get it. But the sentiments of my heart, right. And when your heart is pure and your motives are pure, this is a God's project. And you all keep hearing me say, don't look at me, look at him because this is his doing. And it is marvelous in his sight. This is his doing of transformation, not just in our lives, but the women and the men and whoever gets this in their hand. And so what's next for us? Whatever God says is next for us. So July 28th, though, it's our launch day. But what we're doing, we're looking beyond the launch, right? You see so many book projects and different things, and people are all excited for the launch. But I want people to get excited about prayer. Get excited about what God is doing. Get excited about what he's already done. Get excited for the transformation. Get excited about the manifestation. Alicia, your womb. Preparation preparation right and so that's what we have coming up next if i could say anything pray about it give it to god work do exactly what he's telling you to do yeah. right stay mm -hmm. focused in your faith the enemy comes to sift us like wheat and so that our faith can be shaken and that's what he's been trying that's what he's been trying to do in this season is shake our faith and get us unfocused let me tell you since this project I've had tested. I'm north, south, east, west, behind, in front, under your feet, all over. But I refuse to be shaken. I refuse to say, I, we can't turn back. We don't have time. We don't have time to keep going around and around and around. But even in this month of July, it's the, it's the, um, the number seven completion is finished. So that burden, that thing that you've been praying for. And ladies, you have heard me say it, double, double, double. What have I been saying? Congratulations. So congratulations, Alicia, right? Congratulations. Let's get ready to have a virtual baby shower and stuff. Congratulations, Crystal D Life on your projects and different things. It's a girl's thing. Congratulations, Attorney Bass Knight on where you're going. Congratulations, Dr. Sapp. Congratulations, LaCara. Congratulations, LaWana and Dr. Catherine and Belisa and Michelle and Dr. Dr. Amos, who else up here? I got to say congratulations to everyone. Um, Mama Sandy, congratulations, lady. Get excited. And to those who are listening out there, get excited about what God is doing. Get excited and be an expectation. I'm excited. I don't even know if y'all can tell, but I'm excited about what he's doing. Like today, like I said, I felt like I was having literally contractions. 
right? I shared it with Tamika and Dr. I felt like I was having contraction to the point I was throwing up. That might be a little too much information, but let me tell you, Holy Spirit was speaking. And I felt like I was having morning sickness and I was delivering a baby, like going into labor on the floor to the point I had to lay on my side and I was like, okay, Lord, what's going on? But God is saying, you know what? Birthing, it's birthing season, it's birthing season. So that's why the enemy is coming at you at on your job. He's coming at you through family members. He's coming at you through grief and everything, trying to burden you down, get your mind, get you off focus. The Bible says we have eyes, but you cannot see. You have ears and you cannot hear. So even on tonight, whoever's listening, Holy Spirit, we're saying fine tune our eyes and our ears. Let us see you, let us hear you that no man's voice will be followed, but we're going to follow God. Why? Because we are women who pray. And even if you're saying, I don't really like to pray. I don't know how to pray. You know how to talk, right? Open up your mouth. The Bible says you ask and whatever we ask if it's in his will. So open up your mouth and ask, open up your mouth and give him worship, open up your mouth and give him praise, open up your mouth and declare over your life. Even if you say, you know what, I'm, I live in sin. Declare over your life, I am a woman who pray. I'm not a woman who got, so I'm not a simple woman. That's in Proverbs. We're wise women. So I'm a wise woman taking constructive, getting knowledge, but I'm on my knees and I'm praying and I'm listening and then I'm going to obey. And so July 28th, you all look. We're going to have a celebration that day. Like we ain't even paying attention to Amazon on that day for the bestseller because we already know what God already has done. It's already done. It's already done. Whatever you need, it's already done. But do you believe it? Someone, Tamika said, a faith of a mustard seed. Do you believe? Do you believe you already have the breakthrough? Do you believe you already have the manifestation? Breakthrough and manifestation. Breakthrough and manifestation. So get prepared. Get in position. Right? Get in the birthing position because why? Because now is your time. Now is your time. Don't abort the mission. Don't abort the baby. Keep pushing, keep going and declare, I am a woman who prays. And if it's a man listening, you are a man who prays, okay? <laughs> so Dr. Kathy, thank you. Uh, Mama Sandy, thank you. Ladies up here joining us on tonight, thank you. All the 91 women, that's including Dr. Kathy Amos, thank you for being obedient to the assignment. This wasn't just a book anthology. This is an assignment. This is a mission because things are changing in our families. Amen. Things are changing in our workplace. Things are changing in our bodies. Why? Because we are turning back and putting our faces down and say, God, I, we're lifting our hands and say, God, I surrender. And I am a woman who prays. Amen. Ooh, we, you know, I, I mentioned this a, uh, a few weeks ago and I don't think that uh, 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 some of you may have saw the post or the comment that I made, but when the Lord showed me that I asked Carlika, I said, is there 90 women or 91? Because he gave me Psalm 91. And it really, if you all would just grab this, that not only are we women who pray, but we are Psalm 91 women, women that dwell okay. in the secret place of the most high God. Okay. All Come right. on, somebody. All right. All right, yeah. Because we abide under the shadow of of the almighty Jesus, Jesus, let me just Jesus, can, I, can somebody just pull it up i'm not gonna preach to you tonight but he gave me that word for the women who pray 91 women wow. psalms 91 i got you dr kathy uh okay come on <laughs> I, got, I got you i just looked over right over there at my bible and it was right on over there psalms 91 and it says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the filer and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. 
only with thy eyes shall she shall 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 thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thy shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou shall dash thy foot against a stone. Okay. Thou shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample, uh, trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him high because he has known my name. 15, and he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Last verse, with long life, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And what salvation means deliverance, glory to God. Y'all better <laughs> shout right there because that whole Psalm 91 prophesied every day. Walk in it every day. It is your portion not only are you just women who pray but you are now psalms 91 women mm. walk in it live in it be it know it understand it embrace it it is yours wow. and the last wow. thing i want to leave with those of you that are listening and will be listening to the replay of this i thank you very much for tuning in but i want you to understand that we when we learn how to pray and receive results from our prayer, we get joy out of praying. We want to pray more. When we see God answering one prayer for us, that makes us want to pray more. Because why? We want to see the manifestation. In that mm, way, yes. prayer becomes a joy and not a chore. Let me say that again. Prayer becomes a joy and not a chore. So if uh, your prayer life is like, oh, I got to pray, you have not experienced the full manifestation of heaven coming down to earth on your behalf. Whenever you begin to experience that, your eyes will become open to the things that God is really doing. Open your eyes and see how God is moving on your behalf. Humble yourself before the mighty hands of God and allow God to show you the great things that he has laid up. And I could go on and on, but I just, because I'm a fool and I'm really excited and I'm truly grateful for these women tonight. Yes. Malika, keep doing what you're doing. If I can ever be a part of helping to do anything that you are doing, I would love to do it. Psalm 91 women. Amen. Yes, Dr. Sapp, she wrote it in there for I sure. Mean, that might be your next book, girl. <laughs> Dr. Kathy, before we end, you do have an announcement. I know okay. we're a little over time. It's very important That's that fine. we get this information. But before you do that, may I share about a, a prayer project? Uh, the Lord says in the midst of this, God has called us to do many things and God has called me into doing a coastwide prayer. Uh, there has been a large number nationwide, but on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, we have seen an increase of killings and at gun hand of young people. And so God has given me an assignment. It was assignment a year ago, but he said, do it again. And a week before he, uh, the week after he told me to do it, a mother and her baby was killed. And so, uh, on the 31st of July at nine o'clock a.m. We will be on um, those that want to join me. I will be on the east side of Jones Park in Gulfport. We will be there for one hour lifting up the name of Jesus, but coming against gun violence in the black community, as well as the domestic violence. And so please keep that event on your calendar. Dr. Kathy will now be sharing the information for our upcoming awards. Thank you for allowing me to do that. The Best of Mississippi Awards is coming up August 28th. If you have not gotten your ticket, please do so. Uh, this is a social distancing event, and it is, uh, we encourage you to please wear your mask. 
uh, please go to uh, the website, www.bemississippi.com. Uh, join us. This is a chamber, not just a, a, a statewide chamber, but now we're in eight different states and in two different countries. So join us, partner with us at Business Empowered Mississippi Chamber of Commerce. We'd love to have you. We'd love to spread uh, the love and the partnership and help you to elevate what you're doing in your world. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you for tuning in and we will talk with you soon. <laughs>